when you go to the airport and see the commercial planes there, you can help but notice the huge engines that power them. Most commercial jets are powered by the turbofan engines. And turbofans are one example of a general class of engines, called gas turbine engines. You may never heard of the gas turbine engines, but they are all used in all kinds of unexpected places. For example, many of the helicopters you see, a lot of the smaller power plants, or even at an M1 tank, use gas turbines. There are many different kinds of turbines. You have probably heard of the steam turbine. Most powerful plants use coals, natural gas, oil or a nuclear reactor to create steam. The steam runs through a huge and very carefully designed multi-stage turbine to spin it output sharp that drives the plant's generators. Hydroelectric dumps are used water turbines in the same way to generate power. The turbine used in hydroelectric plants look completely different from a steam turbine because water is so much denser and slower moving than steam but is the same principle. Wind turbine, also known as a windmill, use the wind as their moving force. A wind turbine looks nothing like a steam turbine or a water turbine because wind is slow moving and very light, but again the principle is the same. A gas turbine is an extension of the same concept. In a gas turbine, a pressurized gas spins the turbine. In all modern gas turbine engines, the engine produces its own pressurized gas, and it does this by burning something like a propane, natural gas, kerosene or jet fuel. The heat that comes from the burning, the fuel expands air, and a high-speed rush of this hot air spins the turbine. Gas turbines engine have a great power to weight ratio compared to the engines. That is the amount of the power you get out of the engine compared to the weight of the engine itself. It's very good. Gas turbine engines are smaller than their counterparts of the same power. The main disadvantage of the gas turbine is that, compared to the engine of the same size, they are expensive. Because they spin at such a high speed and because of the high operating temperature, Designing and manufacturing gas turbines is a tough problem from the build, engineering and material standpoint. Gas turbines also tend to use more fuel when they are yielding, and they prefer a constant rather than a fluctuating load. That makes gas turbines great for things like a transcontinental jets, aircraft and a power plants, but explains why you don't have one under the hood of your car. Gas turbine engines are theoretically extremely simple. They have just the three parts. Compressor compresses the incoming air to the high pressure. Combustion area burns the fuel and produces high pressure, high velocity gas. Turbine extracts the energy from the high pressure, high velocity gas flowing from the combustion chamber. Large planes use what are known as turbofan engines which are nothing more than a gas turbine combined with a large fan at the front of the engine. Here is the basic layout of the turbofan engine. 
you can see that the core of the turbofan is a normal gas turbine engine, like the one described in the previous section. The difference is that the final turbine stages drives a shaft that makes its way to back the front of the engine to power the fan. This multiple connectric shaft approach, by the way, is extremely common in gas turbines. In many larger turbofans, in fact, there may be two completely separate compression stages driven by separate turbines, along with a fan turbine, as are shown above. All three shafts ride within one another connectively. The purpose of the fan is to dramatically increase the amount of the air moving through the engine, and therefore increase the engine's thrust. When you look into the engine of a commercial plane at the airport, when you see this is a fan in the front of the engine, it is a huge, on the order of the 10 feet in the diameter on a zombie planes, so it can move a lot of air. The air that the fan moves is called the bypass air, because it bypasses the turbine portions of the engine and moves straight through the back of the nacelle at a high speed to provide the thrust.
the gas turbine itself. Generally, a nozzle is a form in the exhaust of the gas turbine to generate a high-speed jet of exhaust gas. A typical speed for the air molecules existing the engine is a 1,300 miles. The bypass air generated by the fan. The bypass air moves at a slower speed than the exhaust from the turbine, but the fan moves a lot of air. As you can see, the gas turbine engines are quite common. They are also quite complicated, and they stretch the limits of the both fluid dynamics and material sciences. If you want to learn more, a worldwide place to go would be the library of a university with a good engineering department.